And I was just so scared. Like, this is such a giant thing to take on that I had, I was so out of my limit. You know, like this was so beyond what I thought I could do. So I've made art my whole life. And I mean, ever since I was a little kid. And I, and I really, this is like what I've done. <laughs> you know, this is the thing that I did art my whole life. And, you know, I hated it when, I mean, I remember many years of not liking what I was making. And sometimes I would hit it and other times not, but mostly not. And I hated that feeling of kind of trying, but not, not really pulling it off. And it felt hard and this, perpetually feeling kind of vulnerable you know I'd work in the studio and I, I didn't like what I was making people would say oh yeah are you an artist or what do you what kind of art do you make and I, I wouldn't even feel like talking about it because I just I didn't even feel that fixed in it it just felt like this activity that am I an art like it's going so poorly that maybe I'm not Maybe I'm not, and, and I didn't have confidence and all that. And there's just tons of vulnerability swirling around my life because of this. I now understand this thing about vulnerability, and it is so, so important. Welcome to Art to Light, a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. This is what's up for me with, with this vulnerability thing. I. I, maybe about 15 years ago, yeah, 18 years ago, I think. So I've always done all this running. I mean, this is, this is where I learned this thing of vulnerability. It wasn't actually making art. I mean, the power of it, it wasn't learning this, making art, because even though I felt vulnerable all the time, it had to do with a, a trail race. And I've always done a lot of running for a number of years. I was I was doing these ultra runs, these like really, really long runs, uh, 40 miles, 60 miles, you know, just insane, but really cool because turns out you can, you can train and you, you can actually do this. This is the thing you can, you can get fit enough to where if you don't run too fast and you have lots of turkey sandwiches, you can just run all day long. It's kind of crazy. And I, I got into this and I ended up signing up for this race called the Western States 100. And it's a trail race uh, that goes from Squaw Valley, uh, California to Truckee, California. And it goes through the mountains and it's a hundred mile trail race. And, you know, it's hard to get in and you have to pay all this money. And, and I trained for it with some friends and of course, there is just a huge amount of uncertainty about pulling this off. And and it's scary because, you know, I had never run anywhere near that far. And to think that, that this is the plan, that I'm going to do this thing in one shot. And, and, you know, if you'd go under 24 hours, you get this big silver belt buckle. And I mean, it's a pretty ugly thing, but it because you, you get kind of you get kind of fixated on it you know going under 24 hours in western states it's like that's this epic thing to pull off you know and if you if you take like 32 hours or whatever you you have to come in you know in 32 hours or less and if you do that you get like a bronze uh, belt buckle which is not as good but it's more just this huge thing that you that starts to take meaning because uh, it becomes important because of all the training. So, you know, you, a year out, you start running and you, you, you know, you run longer and then you run longer and then you learn about how to fuel your body and you're running 20 miles a week and then you increase to 30 and 
and the injuries come and and then you keep training and winter comes and you got to keep running all winter because this thing is in the early spring in the Sierras and it's in June, end of June. And so you got to run all through the winter and California is pretty mild winter, but uh, you, we would go up to the mountains and, and run kind of on this course and there was snow and it becomes a, such a big deal. And, and, and it's absolutely sort of, I'm imagining to anyone listening, it's like a meaning, you know, why, but just like art, when you, when you try to do something and, and you kind of keep working at something, it becomes somewhat important. It's like you create the value by the effort you put into it. That was the first lesson. Like by the time this thing was a month or two out, I was so fixated on it. And I mean, I, it became like a part-time job or a, or a full-time job. I was running dozens of hours a week and, you know, a hundred miles a week, 80 miles a week. And I did all these races beforehand. And, and then, you know, this thing's coming and, you know, you're about a, two weeks away and then, and you're perpetually hungry and you're tired all the time because you're running all the time and getting trained for this. But then what you do is you stop running and you just rest and you rest until the day of the race. And you start going out of your mind because you're, you're so used to running and you feel so good because you get rested. And then this thing comes and you know, you start at six in the morning, five in the morning and, and you, you know, it's pitch dark and there's about 400 people that do this thing. And I was so terrified about not doing it or, or crash and burning halfway through, you know, in the, in the wilderness. And I just, I just wanted to complete it. I, I wasn't so, I didn't care so much. I mean, obviously I wanted to go under 24 hours, but I just wanted to complete it. I'd worked so hard if I, you know, and I, it, the most I had trained that year was, I think I did 60 miles in one day and it almost killed me, you know? So the idea that I could almost double it in one, you know, but, but people said that this is what you do if you're really rested and the day comes. So this thing starts and, and it's just this beautiful sunrise and, <laughs> and you never know how you're going to feel on these big run days, you know, but mine, I actually felt really good. And I kept thinking, God, I still feel good. And I, the first 30 or four miles, uh, we were way up in the mountains. You do all this climbing. You, there's about 20,000, 18,000 feet of climbing in this event. And, you know, we're running through the snow and we're way up in the mountains and the sunrise is coming up. And it, it was incredible. I mean, I, I felt pretty good. And, you know, and I, I did like 30 miles of it and I was still felt good. And I was going slow. Everyone said, go really slow. You know, I had a guy who was sort of training me and you keep fueling your body. And, but here's the thing around the vulnerability. And this is, this is what happened was I didn't realize that, like, I, I was really scared of this event. And, and, you know, I remember staring up at this escarpment. It's this mountain that you got to climb in the morning and we're all, before the gun goes off to start. And I was just so scared. Like, this is such a giant thing to take on that I had, I was so out of my limit, you know, like this was so beyond what I th thought I could do but I'd paid the money and here I was. And, you know, I had my family there, you know, like my kids were, they were quite young at the time, but you know, I had, I had a crew of people up to help me that were meeting me every seven or eight miles to give me food and water. And, you know, so, so you're running this thing and, and you're, you're just scared. I, I did not have, I wasn't overflowing with confidence, especially when we just started and it's all dark and pretty cold, you know, and I got all the, my lights and everything. And, but as I, you know, the first 30 or 40 miles, I, I felt pretty good, you know, and I still like, Oh my God, I've, I've already done like a third of this thing and I still feel good. And the sun was coming up and, you know, and it starts getting hotter and hotter, but there's all these people along the way. And tons of them, like I think 400 people do the race. And I think about 3000 people support it with all these aid stations in the middle of the woods. So you run for hours by yourself and then you come to a, come to this clearing and they're playing music and they've got these tables set up with all this great food and cookies and Coke and, you know, just all the things that you might fancy cantaloupe. And, um, 
and they're encouraging you and they're like awesome and giving you a high five and, and you need it. Like (laughs) you, I realized as I was doing this thing, like, I don't think I could do this by myself. Like, I know I couldn't. It's the fact that it's so big and and I'm so vulnerable and and I don't know how to do this, but, and, and people encouraging me and they see you, you know, like they're proud of you. Like there's this amazing, inspiring thing, just trying to do something you haven't done before. Anyway, it just gets crazy and you keep running and the night comes and you run all through the night and you have a pacer and he's got a light. And I mean, it was just an unbelievable, I ended up doing it in um, 21 and a half hours, which was incredible for me. Our, for our first time doing it, it was one of the best days of my life, but also one of the most vulnerable periods of my life and of, you know, a day in my life where, you know, gradually gaining confidence and using everybody, like encouraging me and believing in me when I couldn't, when I didn't, you know, and finishing this thing was so amazing. I mean, I lost both, both my toenails and, you know, you're just really dirty and really disgusting as you can imagine. And I'll never forget it. My then daughter, my youngest daughter was like six or seven, you know, she ran out, you know, and ran up to me as I crossed the finish line. And I mean, I was really, really gross, dirty, sweaty, awful, but, you know, she just hugged me and I'll never forget it. You know, like, she didn't stand away, you know, she totally hugged me. But the thing, the event, and, and at the end of it, and then for days after and weeks after, this thing broke me open. The vulnerability of doing this and 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 the people, the people that supported me opened my heart in a way and it changed me forever. And it made me realize the sort of the value and, and the nobility almost, and the, the incredible thing of, of going out a little bit on a limb, like what that does for people who see it, what that does for you, like to do that, you're no longer an island just pulling off impressive things. You're a person who is reliant so much, somewhat on others. And I had always, you know, growing up and as a younger person was sort of like, I'll take care of this. I can do this. I'm just going to do this and pull this off. And it was all about me doing everything. And this taught me a tremendous amount about how you can do so much more with a more open hearted orientation. And that comes from vulnerability. This so relates to art making and doing work that isn't just easy or necessarily like we do that. We hit patches of making our work where it's just super simple and feels great and everyone loves it. And, you know, those are really, really great. But in time, at least for me, they've, they've, it tends to sort of get boring and what shifts it is is going trying to do an aspect of this thing that you don't yet know and that is this feeling comes back where there's this vulnerability but now i see it as like almost like it just comes with the territory of making art and i think it makes really really incredible art it makes work And this is just my theory. This is just what I see from my experiences and actually coaching a lot of people. And when it comes to selling work, when it comes to people connecting with your work, when you make work that is coming from this place of, I'm just doing my best here and I'm not entirely sure. And there's a lot of hunches and vulnerability and confidence from experience sort of mixed together in the art, there's more room for people to see and experience you and they connect, you know, just like those people during that race, there was such a deep connection. I mean, it wasn't made up. People were feeling really connected 
to me and the other people trying to do this because they saw themselves in what we were doing and they, they could feel it and they wanted to support it. It's almost like if you're there, you're like a stand in for them. I think this makes really amazing art. And it also is part of the business plan. Like your work will connect with more people when this aspect is in it. And, and it's a little hard up front, but it is what makes the breakthrough work, I think. You know, I have a therapist and he, we were talking about relationships and he had this really great thing that uh, he was sharing about just developing your own happiness. Like he said that there's four quadrants. You can be happy alone. You can learn to be happy alone. You can, you can be, you know, you're either happy by yourself or you're unhappy by yourself, or you can be unhappy with another person or you can be happy uh, with another person. And he says, the one you want to really, really focus on is being happy by yourself <laughs> because that will preclude the other two. I mean, the hard ones, right? If you're happy by yourself, you'll never tolerate being unhappy with another person. You just won't do it. Like, why would you do that? And if you're happy by yourself, you, you're not, and you learn to develop that, you're not going to be unhappy by yourself. So you, that's the thing you want to focus on. And it relates to art making in that, it's very, very similar. I mean, art, your art is like the thing you're in relationship to. Like you can, if you can learn to make your art and be sustaining with it and be happy with it and be okay in the vulnerability, as opposed to being unhappy, if you can learn to do that, then when you're making your art and, and, and with the other, which actually is the audience with the galleries, with the whole scene, the Instagram, like that, you can learn to be happy with that. That can bolster you up, right? Because you might not, I mean, this has happened to me, you know, where my works, I'm not that into it, but other people are into it. And it kind of like keeps you going for a while because it's like, I don't like what I'm doing, but the rest of the world does. So it must be good. And maybe I'm okay, you know? And then if we have, you know, making your work and being unhappy and trying to do it in, in, in the public, like that's awful, you know, like that's the worst, worst of, of everything. So learning to accept this vulnerability and understanding that it's part of this art making thing and that you can be happy in that, um, because that's where the incredible art comes out of, you know? And so there's, there's this, this happiness factor that like being able to just be sustained in it and you're just doing it. The, the project is I'm learning to do this. This is the orientation where you're coming from when you're making your art, what, like the best come from for me in, is okay, you know, I've done this a long time, but I'm learning this thing here. And this is what it looks like when I'm, I'm excited and I'm trying my best, everybody. And this is what it looks like. And some parts of this are great. And some of these aren't so good. And I'm trying, I'm just trying here. And that's a really, uh, I think a really clean orientation to the relationship with your art as opposed to trying to make art when you're, when you're needing it to, to hold your identity as something incredible or that you're going to sell more work this year, all those things that kind of are connected to, to a certain, a certain performance of art making that you need to happen to make yourself feel happy in this art thing. These things have to happen. And it creates a kind of pressure and a kind of challenge uh, that does, I think, affect the work. I can tell when I'm making work that is a little, um, that's got too much of me 
my small concerns about me trying to be more important than actually I am to make myself feel better. I know what my work looks like when I'm doing that and it doesn't turn out as good. And, and people understandably, they don't really care so much about it. You know, they don't, they, it doesn't, it doesn't have like, there's no room in it for them. I'm doing the creative visionary program right now. It's our 12 week uh, art to life's 12 week art program. Uh, And it's all about igniting your, your art and and discovering it and figuring that out. Like that's such a cool thing to figure out. And and you could spend years doinking around like I did trying to figure this out, but our program helps people with this and, and guides them through this process. And it's 12 weeks long. And, you know, they learn all this art making information all the principles of value, design, color, and, 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 you know, and, and they do a deep dive into what inspires them and getting clear on that, what brings them alive, like, and putting those things together. And then part of the program is this, uh, they develop a a series of work. They do a a series of paintings, three or four paintings, um, based on this new information they have, which will, almost always be much, much, much stronger than what they've done in the past. So this is all about a process of working. You know, and I was talking a minute ago about how, if you can do this thing in a happy way, in a sustainable way, um, there's the work will come out better. But anyway, part of the program is I do a, a, a series of paintings and, uh, along with them. So from the last four weeks, each week I'm, you know, I'm starting four paintings on the first week. And then the next week I'm working on them a little bit more. And the next week, and there's like four or five passes, four or five times, six times when I'm working on these paintings. And, you know, the whole idea is, you know, that I'm showing, demonstrating how the approach, this whole process and how, at least in the things that I'm working on and the way I'm working and the, uh, the principles I'm using that I'm teaching, that this thing kind of is supposed to turn out. These, this series go from like white squares, they're on panels, 12 inch panels, and they turn out uh, to be a pretty cool, like three or four paintings at the end of this thing. And they, and they're doing their own, of course, but I'm the teacher and I'm doing this work, you know? And so the come from is like, I'm trying to, you know, obviously I'm the teacher. I want to show people that I can do this thing, you know? And, and so there's a little bit of pressure and I've, I've got to like start them on one week and I got to finish them three or four weeks later. And that's very different than the way I normally work. You know, normally I, whatever, there's not really, though sometimes there's a deadline with a show, but I got months, you know, this thing's like, I got to nail it. So I'm working on these things and each week goes by and they're kind of getting better. And I'm being, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing my best. Like I know how to do this. And so I get them all the way I've got, and this is where I am right now. I got them all the way. I've got one more pass on them and they got, They seem pretty good. You know, they weren't like amazing, but they seem pretty good. But for one of my live calls, I had to demonstrate on another three paintings how to like be crazy and experiment and just have fun. That was the whole thing. And I recorded this thing and it was was, it's all about making textures. And and I just have to like do that. I just have to like have a lot of fun for an hour film it and then play it at high speed and talk about it when I do my presentation to this group. You know, we just did this today, actually. So I took three paintings and in an hour, I experimented on all of them, three things. And it was really fun and there was no plan. I used all kinds of screwdrivers and sandpaper and just all these texture making principles and but, you know, what I'm what we're teaching this week is just how to have fun, basically, and experiment. And what happened, it was about an hour and 15 minutes I did these things in. These three paintings <laughs> turned out so much better than the paintings I've been working on to show all these students this, the process, right? Like, 
I like the come from was so different. The come from with these things I just took an hour and a half on hour and 20 minutes on was just like, have fun, experiment, do stuff you haven't done before. Right? Like there's high vulnerability, but I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just having fun and experimenting. And the paintings turned out like they're really cool. Like I'm really excited about it, you know, and they're much stronger than those other paintings where I'm trying to force this outcome. And, you know, we all know this when you're trying to, you know, trying too hard and all that, but that's the difference. There's a cleanliness about the come from. There's something that's clean about, I'm just going to, I'm just going to try my best. And that's it. I don't have to, it doesn't have to turn out. I just, all I got to do is show up and use everything I know. And some days it'll be better. Some days it won't be, but it makes art that is so much better. It's so much better than when it feels like there's parts of you in it that is needing something. There's a lacking, there's a personality part that you're trying to fill a pothole of yourself and your art's involved in it and it kind of can show. Now, no one looking at your work is going to point this out. I get that. No one is, but you can feel it. And I'm just so curious what I've seen in all my coaching and in, in my work, especially the work that has that, that just that clean approach And it's just got beautiful, like risk and vulnerability and all that mixed in with it. That work lands. That work is the best work and it sells. People choose that work. And so do you, you know, it's like, it it is better. I can look at someone's work and I can see, we can all see this when somebody is just, they've let go and they're just experiencing it and they're loving it. That is, that's the goal. That's the whole thing with art making. So I don't know. I just, it's sort of a rant, but I, I just wanted to share, like I'm learning this vulnerability thing is, 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 it's such an important part of, of art making. And I just, I have avoided it my whole life and it, it's the best thing. It's the thing that, that takes you on your journey. It's those false steps that seem to be false, but they were actually needed So listen, I'll uh, post some photos of those different series that I uh, mentioned, as well as uh, some links to that race and a few other things all can be seen if you go to arttolife.com and uh, click on podcasts, Um, all all that will be there. Super appreciate being there. You can also leave a comment there. I'd be curious about uh, your thoughts on this because uh, this is just this is just what's up for me and uh, it's always interesting to hear from you so go ahead you can leave a, a comment on the website thanks again so much for being here hey thanks for listening to the art to life show if you enjoyed the podcast please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on instagram at art to life underscore world The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art, can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review in whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning I send out a video blog all about art making. Go to arttolivepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you next week. Bye.